Welcome to the Endless Honeymoon Podcast. I'm Natasha Legero. Yeah. Sorry, I was just running. How much dog pee? Like, how how fast is it cool to pick up dog pee? How fast? Well, I mean, how how fast can you go? Excuse me? <laughs> what do you mean by that? Like, I went ran upstairs and the dogs had pissed everywhere, but we had to start our podcast. Okay. So I like kind of like threw the daughter's nightgown kind of where the dog Wait, pisses. You, th- you threw our daughter's nightgown <laughs> so I would, onto a urine puddle? So I would remember where the pee was because I had to hurry up and go. Oh, I get that. I put like wrappers down. Right, because I, I want to do a thorough cleaning, but not just not now. Actually, it's funny that you bring up wanting to do a thorough cleaning because I bought a specific vacuum robot. It's like a, a it's like some, it's the, the Bissell spot bot that's what it's called i hate that and you won't use it you prefer to be on hands and knees like cinderella scrubbing urine with your bare hands and i've got this robot that will do it for us because it's like takes up so much space i what do you mean it takes up there's always like a cord and like there's like like this weird sound coming from the dining room yeah it's an electric machine (sighs) i just think maybe the dogs will be dead soon and our lives will be easier. But you somehow equate the use of the spot bot to like uh, TikTok culture. Like you, somehow <laughs> there's a link in your mind that like that that like iPad putting kids on iPads and having them be in screen time and the, the you know the the cultural disease that is the internet is somehow also connected to anything that's electricity. You know you're a straight up luddite. Yeah, I am. You wish we were like churning butter by hand. It's so funny because you would have only thrived in one position in like the 1300s. Wife? No, the bourgeois. Like you, like some kind of like nobility class. You think the wives didn't work hard back in the day? In you the think Black I don't want to work hard? I just don't like technology. You don't want to work. Hell no. You want to be on a chaise lounge. You want to be on a velvet chaise lounge as serfs bring you mutton stew. That sounds boring. What would you? What do you think you would have done in the 1300s? Oh, here's a question for you too. Do you think you would have survived World War II? No, probably not. And I'd be and if if it was the 1300s, I'd be a prostitute. <laughs> okay, the sporting life. I guess. Man, it probably was rough to be a prostitute in 13 in the 1300s. You had to worry about all the venereal diseases and then also the plague. Ugh. Can you imagine catching a pl- the plague from a John? A sailor comes in from town. Actually, he, you know what? I I probably you take it back. Well, I think that's what would have happened to me. Uh huh. But it doesn't sound fun. You don't think you would have been um, a body bard in a traveling theater? Yeah, if I got lucky. Yeah. What do you think I would have been? Because I bet it was really hard. Um, you know. You know what I would have been? What? Town Jew. <laughs> Strung no, up been, by my toenails. You would have been like traveling juggler. <laughs> you think? Yeah. Do you think you would have given me the time of day if I was like you were the bar, you're the body, like singer songwriter, like uh, you know, oh the prince is in town and everyone's <laughs> merry. Give me a bowl full of berry, mead to drink, and things to think. All of us gather around the table, oh, and I then I come through. Te- I come through on stage, and I'm like, doo, 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 and I've got like. I'm like throwing colored balls and doing like contact juggling and stuff. And then I look at you from across the the stage and somebody's like, hey, get the Jew off the stage or whatever. And I was like, would you like to get some like mutton with me at some point? Would you like to go to the inn and, and get a, a, a hot a hot leg of mutton? Do you think you would have gone out with me? I mean, that's kind of what happened. <laughs> you think? I could have also been a barmaid. Oh, bar wench? Yeah. I don't think, but then you would have had to work hard, hard. Yeah. And you would have like been sleeping on a straw mat upstairs Ooh. afterwards with like I maggots hate in it. Gross stuff. Right. You thirteen hundreds wouldn't have been for you. I think people took. I think Europeans back then took a weekly shower. Did they like take some kind of drug to not smell stuff? Yeah, and... they took it. That's so <laughs> yes, uh, so crazy. Well, I mean, with like that, how... that without a, a history degree, you were able to nail it exactly. They took a, a how did they a drug deal with it? Promethazine nine, <laughs> and it allowed their uh, their nasal synapses not to fire. How did they deal with the 
the grossness and the like the, well, these heavy, dirty skirts walking around hiking, and well, you're like, well, everybody was gross. You know, Victorian gown. Pre-Victorian. We're we're pre. Where are we? What's 1300s? Right. Is Dark but Ages. People were still like overdressed. Yeah, they were overdressed. They had a lot people of people were wearing athleisure. No, they had not yet created the uh, the health goth. <laughs> but yeah, it was a gross time. In fact, speaking of Jews, do you know that the Jews were looked down upon? Um, for bathing so much back then interesting because they were always because ba- ba- jews uh, bathe a lot because of ritual bathing mm-hmm. and isn't ev- that just in the mikvah once a week though well they also like wash their hands yeah but before that's not bread bathing well they didn't do that either back then in the 1300s Do you know what toilet paper was in the 1300s a book your hand wait hold on your mutton so your, your just- non-mutton hand did it just smell like shit? I think so, yeah. I think it smelled like doo-doo. Oh, that's why people had nose gays. Actually, I heard something interesting recently. What's a nose gay? It's like a little bit of crushed lavender that you keep in front of your nose in a satchel when you like oh. have to go through the poo-poo town. Poo-poo town? That sounds like something rich people had. I heard something recently, speaking of it smelling like shit back in the day. You know the expression um, um, piss poor? Mm-hmm. Piss poor comes from the time when you were poor enough that you didn't have like a, a an outhouse to pit to piss into mm-hmm. you didn't have a, a bathroom or whatever and so you had a piss pot under your um under your your bed and you would piss in that but do you know what you know the expression doesn't even have a pot to piss in came from that that's from people that were even poorer than piss poor people they couldn't afford even the piss pot that's an interesting way to like explain how what your f- socioeconomic background is. How Where many, do you piss? No, how many bathrooms were there growing up? Because I have a friend who grew, who's a very funny comedian who grew up in it, who had an outhouse. Who's that? It's personal. But then it's I... It's personal? Well, I mean... I Wait, they're a comedian. They don't talk about how they had an outhouse growing up? <laughs> no, and then think about it. Then... Is it Kevin Hart? <laughs> we had one Dwayne bathroom for four people. Uh-huh. So I think if you had one bathroom for a whole family... It was kind of like a little bit more of a chaotic childhood. I was a one bathroomer for sure. I was yeah. a big time one bathroomer. Like think of how rich you'd have to be to have like three bathrooms growing right. up. Right. Well, we have three bathrooms in this house. I guess. Man, life is good. I guess we're lucky. We're we're living on the edge. <laughs> um, well, speaking of piss, I'm excited to introduce our guest. I wonder how many bathrooms she had growing up. I'm going to say two for sure. I think you're right. I think she might be a two bathroomer. (laughs) Okay. Interesting. I'm so excited to talk to our friend tonight because she is a great friend of mine. Our (laughs) kids are great friends. Our kids are close. They have bonded. She is hilarious. Indeed. A writer for such luminescent programs as Big Mouth. As Search Party. She was in Carol's second act on television. Great writer, even funnier actress. Wonderful stand-up comedian and friend of the Legero Cashers, the one and only Sabrina Jalees. Yo. Hey, girl. Hey. Hi, guys. I wish we were hanging in person. I know. Sabrina, we have a question for you just to get things started and kind of break the ice a little bit. Cool shirt, by the way. What's going on with that? This was a uh, Christmas jacket Shauna got me, and this is my first time wearing it. It uh, looks so good on you. It was it was ready. Shauna has to be such broadcast. great style. She really kind of nailed it. She really she what she's doing to Wolfie is wild. People are just stopping us in the street. It's like Wolfie's Michael Jackson. It's crazy. Shauna is your wife. Wolfie is your son. Mm-hmm. Just to contextualize your no, entire... no, no, opposite. Wolfie is my wife, and Shauna is my son. <laughs> I totally we'll fucked fuck that. Up, di- it's like you wouldn't think that. I di- I fucked up this dynamic completely, and I've known you for. <laughs> this is very weird. You guys been treating my wife very strangely. Uh, we have a question for you. Natasha has a really important question. Oh yeah. So when you were growing up, how many bathrooms were in your house? Okay. Well. <laughs> this is going to be a doozy. (laughs) I just moved constantly. It was like my parents were running from the law, but really they were just running from like tax law. So they were running from the law. My parents, my mom is Swiss, my dad's Pakistani, and they met in the 70s in Toronto and they bought their first house that they rented together. And from there, they would, they just became landlords themselves in like a minor way where they really should have done different decisions. Like it's not like the succession family that I 
wish that that is. No, you got to say that now because uh, landlords are the ultimate evil now in society. <laughs> I don't know if you know about this, but landlords are as bad of, of a strata of person as you can be. I think chill people for landlords. <laughs> Biden for president, chill people for landlords. Um, did you bo- vote for Biden? <laughs> I can't vote. Oh, that's I'm right. Dating. That's right. Okay, but the the long and the short of it is that we moved into like tiny houses um, that would have half a bathroom. And then we would move into the houses that my dad would like break those houses down and build like, you know, we would each have a bathroom, like four bathrooms. Started from the bottom, now I'm here, now I'm back to the bottom. Your parents sound very resourceful. You put a lot of S on that resource. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like that idea that they are just like taking their kids around from place to place, but still having like a good environment, you know, like that's, I want to do that. You want to move from place to place and live between an apartment with half a bathroom and one with four <laughs> bathrooms? I don't know. I'm just saying. I mean, like, my my friend's parents were definitely like, get it together like they're either <laughs> rich or they're poor like just decide on one. it was like constant very very different well you know so so many people are afraid to make any moves that's why i think it's cool people who are so daring oh, to be bold you're saying well yeah. you're very you're a bold you're a bold person sabrina would you say that's one of your primary what an accusation it's true though when we were can we tell yeah. the story when we were first getting to know sabrina we just have become <laughs> friends. I, ho- I hope you don't. Wait, what story are you going to tell? We'll find out. I mean, if, you, if you don't like I'm it. I was like scared about how I was bold. If you, were, if you don't like the story, we'll edit it out of the podcast. We're not live. But um, we were just getting to know each, o- each other as families. And we had hung out in Mexico, right? We, somehow we were both in Mexico at the same time. And we'd hung out. And we were all hanging out together. And we, dr- we flew on the same flight back home. We we're like, oh, we're really bonding as a group. Really two families becoming one, fusing together <laughs> like Switzerland and Pakistan. And we got to the LAX airport and there was like a, there was like 300 like people. What's that? It was a Bubba Gump shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> I do believe I just want to testify for this moment. It was a Bubba Gump shrimp. <laughs> oh, there was a, in fact, a Bubba Gump shrimp at the, at the, the Puerto Vallarta airport. Then we get to L.A. and we've been talking the whole time and we're like, we got new friends here. And we got to customs and there was a line of about a long line, 300 people. And Sabrina was just like, like, no, she was no longer (laughs) anywhere to be seen. You looked in like in like a group in like an airport setting. You got to throw your friends out the window. You got (laughs) to just get the fuck out of there. You know, like travel light. Where were you? You know? (laughs) It was a force majeure situation because I think we still had your wife and child with us, but you were in, you had cut the entire line and we're in American soil and we were still technically not even in America yet. Like, I guess we'll take these people. I just go into video game mode and slash so LOL retro that I'm like, when I'm at the airport, I go video game. It's like, <laughs> I wish I could play that video game now, but, but you know, like you get there and then it's like, that what you're talking about, it was a moment I have to describe as like, you know, herds of cattle being corralled. It was insane. Yes, it was an insane and mob. And so I just decided, fuck anybody that I know here. We got Including my wife. <laughs> <laughs> no. Just, no, I'm teasing. <laughs> you were taking care of the family. Yeah, let's yeah, it was move. bringing the family out of the. You were in survival. And that's exactly where I, I feel that same thing at the airport. Right, I know. I mean, because like we've been, we have been hanging out in Mexico this whole time. Like, I would love to have mimosas with you, <laughs> literally outside of this airport. <laughs> Let's get the fuck out. Like, follow me is my energy, and that's where I get into trouble because people like think that follow me energy means I'll be safe if I follow you, and it's like, no, you got to be a liar, a cheat. <laughs> Wait, you gotta have us. You, you, it's a bumpy road. <laughs> 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 This reminds me of what Natasha and I were just talking about. Sabrina, what do you think your survival function job role in society would have been in like the 1300s? Fucking all of the wives while the men were eating bears. (laughs) Is that a job? I mean, we got to come to survive, okay? That is the pickle. But if yeah, if you I Natasha said I a bu- emphasize that would be my role truly. Like I've thought about my role in older times, and I do think I would just be like sneakily like airport Jalice brain style trying to get in with <laughs> cool wives that 
you know, like I was, I'd probably be a wife too. Like my Brad Pitt would be off at war as well. <laughs> oh, so you would take the airport energy and apply it to the dark ages. <laughs> yeah. And just funnel my way into different homes. I like this idea. <laughs> it's very, um, what's, what was that movie with the rabbits that the, uh, the guy that directed the lobster did? Oh, uh, um, that yeah. Watership Down? No, with the, with the, with the, when Emma Stone fucks Olivia Coleman. Oh, I mean, I don't want to be Emma Stone, Olivia <laughs> Coleman fucking. <laughs> Let me be clear. <laughs> I want to be a little bit more blue is the warmest color without so much of an age gap and, but mm-hmm. like the passion, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I told Moshe I would either be a barmaid or a prostitute. They just yeah. seem, seem Isn't practical. it interesting that like, no matter how femme or butch you are, when you see yourself in the past, you're like, sex will get me through. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it did not occur to me. I feel sex like my- will get me enough bathrooms to feel comfortable. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I sort of feel like my my version of sex appeal didn't start ramping up until like 1973. I sort of feel like bookish Jew look didn't come into in vogue until I. Yeah, till the '60s at least. I feel like in the 1300s, I wouldn't have had. A, I would have been either a moneylender or a librarian. I mean, we'd all look and feel different. Yes, that is very and smell I different. Wouldn't be wearing this ball cap, I'd be wearing like, <laughs> like oh, like a a scarf, a hats. scarf around your chin, kind of a thing. You could pull. Yeah, it off. I'd be dressed like Natasha does on a Sunday. Now you said femme and butch. Would you consider Natasha on the femme side or butch? butch. Butch. Well, I thought so. anyone can tell she's a butch in a china shop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm a butch. That's so yeah. cool. I never I'm thought the of that. Top, you know that's fake. You're a stone butch. Is what they call you in the gay <laughs> she's community. She's a stone cold butch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Natasha's someone who, like, when I say her name and picture her, my pinky goes up. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay. so I'm feminine. I'm a femme. Are you serious? Yes. Oh, am I? So am I femme? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Sabrina, well, let me ask you this. We had a caller and they were calling me a cishet and we kind of got into this gender. You are discussion. a cishet. I saw that you like tweeted that. I'm like, well, you weren't called a cishet. You simply are a cishet. Well, he was, but don't you think, wait, to, he was just on. trying to say I didn't understand things because of that. Wait, oh. I, I have a question. Don't you? This that is I real... had a, such a limited view, but I, I guess I should have made it more clear. Here's a question. Cishet, <laughs> you're right. It is a description of a type of person, but also like, Jews have this word called goy, which is... Techni- you don't like it when I say that. I don't think it's a good word. It's technically well, the word for a non-Jew, for a Gentile. But okay. I think it's got a little stank on it. It's got a little a little twist of stank at the end. Like, you rarely are like, I love... You know who I love? The cishet community. That is my... <laughs> those are my people yeah, well, right there. Anytime you're describing a community and it's not your community, there is a stank on it because it's a little like... Uh, Hanging with my straight friends. <laughs> it's just that that is like the reason why, you know, what's that? The vow like NVX, like cults exist, religion exists because we all want to feel part of it. Mm-hmm. And I get how someone calling in and being like, you don't get things because you're not part of my thing. And your thing sounds like a science word. It like never sounds good. <laughs> there's the stank. Yeah, no, that is there's true. So is- I, get, I get that. But then there's also the truth that like as a non-Jewish person, I don't really know what the specific stank of saying goy means. Right, you know? right. You That's fair. That. And then you also don't know what it's like to be queer, Natasha, because you committed yourself to a f- full man. I did my mistake. <laughs> a mistake of a man. Hey, I'm still like no, open. <laughs> You've no, never it, dated, you guys have, either of you have never dated the same sex person. I have right? not. No. Which actually- you're this cat motherfucking heterosexual <laughs> fucking losers that don't fucking get it. Wait, when you call us losers, is there stank on that? That feels like there might be stank. Oh, no, no, no. That's just the opposite of winning and you got to be winning. <laughs> well, also, I had never heard the term cishet and I liked it as like any. I, I thought, it, I, you thought I just, it was cool. I thought it was just like either a good barb or a good description. I don't know. I. <laughs> Anyway, the point is Moshe and I were talking about it and he said that he does because I was talking about if, if my kid is like more if we're teaching her too much to be a girl and, you know, in terms of her gender, <laughs> she knows that she pees 
sitting down and your kid pees standing up and I don't know. No, just... he's peeing a lot sitting down. Oh, really? <laughs> Is that something that you're commanding? You're commanding that or? <laughs> well, he's not tall enough to like stand. Oh, right. You know, like it would Height. be very exaggerated. I think boys pee a lot sitting uh. down. I mean, when he's outside peeing, he's peeing standing up. But mm-hmm. so am I, to be honest. So what's your question? Oh, so Tosh? the question is Moshe said he didn't think it was his job to teach his kid to be gender fluid. And I was wondering if you no 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 I, no no gender fluid smart person wait gender fluid is the wrong word I think okay. what I said was it wasn't my job to teach a child to engender uh, for lack of a better word that's not the, the right word to engender a sense of gender neutrality either it's like neither it's not to impose my visions of gender mm. nor is it to say and we are a gender in this family it's like i don't know that my job my job it's is like to wherever she's gravitating is going to be the place to support anyway like that. Who she is like there was nothing my parents could do to make me natasha and nothing <laughs> natasha parents could do to make her me despite all of their trying yes <laughs> All of those calls, and all mine of their, to like, be like you. He's feeding her. What is your relationship with parenting and gender? Do you have thoughts about it? Do you think is it something that you're? I just don't. I, I think that the the it's interesting. Like when Natasha, when you brought this up, I was like, oh, that's weird that there would be like a pressure to make your kid gender fluid. I think that the pressure is just to support them. And the bigger thinking now, or like within the maybe what's it like intimidating about gender fluidity, just like strip away the politics of it and just let your kid be happy and like what makes them happy. And I think that, you know, it, it's, it is, it's funny because Wolfie is like such a boy in a lot of ways, but then he does also express like he loves to wear jewelry and he, would try on like a robe or a like a feminine cut thing and enjoy it. But I think I, I'd, you know, where he lies in the gender spectrum is pretty butch, butch man. Kind of like me, you mean, butch, butch man, like me. But you, but I feel like you and me probably lie similarly. Yeah, in the I kind of think that's right. Yes. You know, like yeah. you probably in your life have been, people have maybe been like, what are you fucking gay? You read books, you know, like, (laughs) or or like you, you like you're sensitive, you know, like there's, there's, there are these like archetypes and everybody actually lies somewhere here. How far feminine am I? Like what's more feminine? You are as there is off the fucking edge. Off the charts. (laughs) This is first cutie. Right. And then me. That is true. I feel like, I feel like you are quite feminine. I'd say like, you're like more feminine than, than most, most people, most women we know. Comics. Most female comics, I think that's definitely true. You might be the most feminine female comic. Yeah, I could, I could see that. I love it. Who's the most masculine male? I guess Joe Rogan is the most masculine male comic. No, he has some feminine. But it's like opinion. weird because it's like two dimensional, and I also think that sometimes like when people express performatively really loud, it really means something the opposite, you know? Or did you know? Um, um, yeah, totally. Mike, Mike Di Stefano. He he passed yeah. away. He was like, yeah. and like Mike Vecchione. I feel like I don't know why I think, you just think New, York, New York. I basically think New York means you're <laughs> you're you're a man. <laughs> but I also think there's like a conditioning in that that like you know those people's parents weren't as like you know it, it, it's like a bit of a there's a performance we're we're all performing something and I think that like the instinct for you guys is right that you don't need to force anything that like. The, the probably like my instinct would be to try to take any performance out of what your kids are doing. Right. You know? right I, yeah. Yeah. And I at the same I... time, like cut to all of us being like, say, thank you. Say, please. <laughs> and you are, a, I love you. I love zooming with you. <laughs> There's um, no performance. So that's what we do is just take the performance out of it. Um, Smile. <laughs> I have a question. Do you have another question? No, for I think Sabrina? that was a good answer. The, it was a good answer. I think answer. Sabrina is very smart. She thinks about these things. Yeah, She's definitely. very wise for her young age. So um, You've been like the young person. Isn't it funny when you're the young person for the long time and then you grow up? And then I'm not young. Though. Yeah. I'm like, I have like a whole family and a child. No, I know. I'm but like your identity, your role, because you started comedy extremely young, right? Yeah. How old are you? 16 or something? When you I started? was 16. Yeah. But my mom told me a really good thing that like helped solve it. Cause I anticipated being having problems. Like I was like, I remember being like 18 and being like on the like 19 under 19, something Canada. Good, good. Like just like a list of like, 
<laughs> you, when yeah. you're young and you do something, then you get in a lot of lists. Well, if you're Canadian and you perform at all, you'll get some kind of an award. <laughs> just no matter yes, what. Exactly. There's like a Canadian, you, you do anything you do, they'll be like, oh, you won, you won. Yeah. So, so, so I was feeling that and saying to my mom, like in the car, I was like, I think I'm going to have a really hard time getting older because I've gotten like so much attention, like as a young, <laughs> like, to be, like as being young. And my mom was like, okay, then you will. And I was like, what? And she was like, well, if you're already planning on having that problem, then you, you definitely will. Wow. <laughs> like, it's like perfect. It's like, yeah, deep. like I, that, that was like almost like baked in movie dialogue that I was performing to her. And she was like, okay, cool. I mean, if that's what you're up to, then yeah, for sure. You're going to have problems. That is really and wise. It was such a good perspective totally. on that. And it's not to say that I don't like see young comics in the green room acting like they are literally, you know, Chris Rock. Yes, yes, yes. Like weeks performing and think like I ha I definitely have like a deeper, you know, you hate the thing in other people that you're like, and there's like a deeper thing with me. And like when I see a younger comic be disrespectful. Oh, like a cocky young comic bothers you more than almost anything because it was you. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I get that. It was her until she was immediately schooled by her darling mother. Right, right, by your Swiss Swiss mom. Well, but I also, I think that I probably was, like, you only know what you know. And to speak to that, like, you know, you don't know because you're cis head or I don't know because I'm, you know, like, oh I only knew being 17, I in comedy, I remember I was going to Second City. I, like, was in the tour co. And if you were in anything in Second City, you could perform in the uh, on the main stage for the improv set. I would go in there two or three times a week and do improv sets with these people that I had no business. Uh -huh. I mean, I for sure didn't even know the rules of improv. It was almost But it like was just this cocky sort of like, and it's sort of like, I, I'm both like, go get him. And also like, I, I, I'm sure I would cringe at some of the... In a weird way, it's like you were cutting the customs line of Second City. <laughs> I, if there's a herd that's moving faster, <laughs> I go with... Hello. No, I hear that. I, I had the same thing in AA where I was like the mascot for for yeah. years. And then all of a sudden I was like a grown up. And then you have to figure out like, what does it mean? How do you transition from being a sh the shiny person that people look at and go, wow, to just like another person in the world? And they're, they're the confidence you get from that is nice and that you can bring into your adult life. And also there's like a set of bizarre things you have to grapple with but i love what your mom said i think that's so wise yeah and it, and also like to speak for both of us we've like figured it out we're adults and it's like we're leading pretty magical lives so amen it's not really like it would suck for sure and i think that is the pressure and that is the thing to grapple with if like you hit some like taste of what it is young and then you're like working at Denny's or something. <laughs> right. And I only think Denny's because I feel like they have indoor dining and people are not working there right now. So like, this is your wake up call. See, I had a unique experience because I, th I like thought I was a struggling actress when I was 12. Like oh. I always felt like I was like, not couldn't, getting it. Couldn't quite get it. <laughs> now I'm going to book this shit. <laughs> I was like in local community theater and I was like, why can't I be like Drew Barrymore? And like, I just wanted, I just want, and then I was hanging out with like old actors from Chicago who kind of like were washed up. And like, I always kind of felt like that even when I was like a child. Right. Your origin story <laughs> was one of struggle and then you came into stand up, and that's where you found. I feel like I've never been as, as happy with my career as maybe Sabrina was when she was 16. <laughs> like, I feel like I never really... About, like, the first time you play hide and seek and it's incredible. Like, the feeling of the first time, like, for all of us, the first time that you tasted what the possibility of having, like, this be a chapter for you, like, this is going to be the future. There is, like, an unlimitedness that is for sure... It is, like, well, you know, I, when you think about the first time that you did stand-up, I'm sure for all of us, it felt like it clicked. It's like, there is something that you can't get back from that. You never get that feeling again. Like I had such a good experience my first time on stage and it's never been like that again. Well, but I, I think, <laughs> I think that's true that, that, that there's something like the first time you really murder, there's some feeling about that. That's almost like drugs. And then you chase the drug 
And that feeling, that chasing the dragon. Oh, I never thought of that. Well, that's, that's you're just horrifying. Well, you're describing the process of, of chasing uh, the first high. That's true. But that's not. But when you transition as a stand up into like, there's another I'm feeling. like a murderer trying to get the, those laughs again. Yeah. But there's another <laughs> feeling, which is when you when you evolve into like a settled, confident headlining comedian that's a different feeling i just feeling. want to clarify something i feel like most you were talking about murder on stage right yes 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 <laughs> okay sasha i think that you thought he meant like when you kill someone the first time like like he was just casually like you know like when you get that first 100 dead woman honestly <laughs> It's probably similar if you're like a pathological it's serial killer. Similar, but I just want to clarify, that's not what you were saying. That's not and what I, I meant. I should spin out about it but, and I wanted to bring it back. It. But I like better the feeling of like every t- when I go to a comedy club, I know that that al- every show or at least almost every show was going to be like a really fun night for the people that came out to see me. Instead of like that panicky feeling at the beginning of your career where you're like, I hope I, I hope I can keep these plates spinning. I don't even actually quite know what I'm doing here. Is the euphoria the same as a, as a 20 years into comedy headliner? No, but the, the kind of like settled feeling of like, I know how, what I'm doing definitely is. I mean, I don't know what I'm doing because I haven't done stand up in since the world ended. And like, it's like, there is this other energy when you talk about it where it's like, I did, I think, I think we'll, I think we'll all reapproach it. I personally feel like I will be more selective about how many, cause I think that I went out a lot to build and build and feel like I had been keeping like maybe the plate spinning of like, this is what I'm doing. But I do think maybe if I, you missed out on your son walking. <laughs> I made eye contact with my family. Yeah. He, he, um, you were walking he was walking you were standing up <laughs> well i just think like it's no it, our, our, we're, we have different values now actually it just i think I put, I put a pressure on myself to like get on stage at least once a week mm-hmm. and i don't know what that i think that that might have been just a remnant of like some old patriarchal you know, you gotta like the rule. Okay. There, there Why you gotta bring that, the patriarchy into it? Haven't we suffered enough? I mean, what? It's just like not. It's not very like majestic flow, understanding, compassion approach. It's more sort of like, you know, the rhythm. And there's a, there are just like a lot of things about stand up in the culture that are old. You know, old school. Maybe patriarchal is the wrong. No, I'm joking. Um, I'm joking. But, well, uh, as you're saying this too, it's making me think like comedy clubs. Like it, the more divided we become as a country. Those are those are like who's in the clubs too. Like people could like what if you do political jokes and or what if you talk? I don't know. I just feel like well, what we did stand up straight through the Trump era and but I, I, think I had a couple of different. I had now. a couple of angry people stand up and say don't say that and then I would you know, everybody else would go shut the fuck up and they'd get kicked out and I'd keep my show going. I'm just saying it doesn't sound that fun. <laughs> stand up period. I think it sounds awesome. It sounds exciting. This idea that you can't, you know, we have this g- weird gift, which is you're talking about the euphoria of the first time you kill. Well, we've all taken like a year off, like, well, not everybody, but a lot of us have taken a year off. We will get that again because you're going to be so shaky when you go back and you're going to have your first, you're going to remember this show because I remember my last show and you're going to remember your first show when you get back on the road and go like, damn, I still got it or damn, I fully lost it. We'll figure something out. Because there'll be some chunks that we can hit and feel new and fresh about, but we're going to have to write a lot like we're gonna have to just and and just like be in ourselves in it in that good way where good writing comes from a but, lot but think about it comedy is so much about reacting to your life and like our lives are going to be so crazy and all crazy in the same way <laughs> True. So we like all have the new same persona, which is like person who just got out of a pandemic. But that's exactly why Trump, they say Trump wasn't good for comedy. I kind of agree. Everybody was like, Trump is going to be great for comedy. And then it like wasn't because everybody was having one of two experiences with him. One was like hating him and the other was being like, you know, actually, I don't hate him. And it was just sort of became rote and boring. And it, nothing great comedically came out of the Trump era. I don't think. I guess the whole area of like pandemic material is going to be very mined. So it'll be similar to a Trump joke. It'll be That's like, what I'm oh, saying. yeah, funny we all pandemic thing, but it could have been a meme. It could have been something you scroll past on Instagram. Cause it is very like, everyone is already experiencing it, but the conversations that we 
wish that we could have had with friends and with on stage mm-hmm. the whole time, like that bursting open will it'll, be yeah it'll create like a night a 20 ro- roaring 20 situation hopefully that the art or will- like literally no one goes back to stand up everyone's like i'm <laughs> good like i've got a podcast i'm acting and writing so i i miss being on stage but wait speaking of conversations with friends we should probably do a call what do you think oh yeah we have someone oh my god i cannot wait to hear from these uh clunies loonies and toonies <laughs> well, there's some very canadian referencing happening right now oh as we make i our, love that our first call that is so funny that people stop you guys on the street like wolfie's michael Jackson. oh today was insane because he <laughs> decided to wear this onesie that um the back of it sean i think sean i got it from like amazon but it's a, a denim onesie and the back says i love my mama and he wanted to wear the back front so then his buttons were on the back and so he's walking down Figueroa with like a mask that Naomi Perrigan's mom made him that's so cute and a hat and people are just and and oh he's also holding a snake that he got and and that Shauna put like a little necklace on the snake so he's just you know we got we got our like the most fun parents like if I think of like if I was a kid who would I want to be my two parents it wouldn't be you and me I, no, because I worry too much. It would be them. <laughs> it is true. You guys are fun parents. I can admit that. I, I don't know if this is less fun than what you did, but we got our kid a similar situation, which is uh, like a a, ja- a dark sort of army green jacket that says, I don't yeah. really care. It's the It was like a Melania, oh an homage yeah. to Melania. And like, we think that's fun. That's so amazing because, you know, that you guys grapple with gender, but that you are specifically know what kind of person you want. Yes, yes. <laughs> we, we, she, we, we, Melania, like the essence is so. That's right. It's very important for us that we don't that we don't uh, impose our ideas of gender on her, but we will impose our ideas of personhood, political orientation and just general human vibe. And generally being Melania. You must be Melania. <laughs> we don't care if you're... A... Wait, do you pronounce it Melania? Yeah, that's... Melania. How... Oh, Melania? You guys are saying Melania. Well, based on how many put on rent accounts, I don't know how you're going to say this word. Milan... Melania? Melania. Melania. No, it's Melania. 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 Okay. Well, speaking of Melania, our first caller is Madeline from Massachusetts. There she is. It's Madeline. Hi. Madeline. Madeline. We were just having a hard time with Melania as well. So forgive us. How do you us. say Melania? Yeah. How do you say the, the president's um, wife? A former president. president Yes, ex-president. Um, Melania? Melania. I'm right. Natasha, what do you want people to be saying? Melania. No, we were wrong, Sabrina. We were saying Melania. <laughs> we were saying Melania. What were we saying? Yeah, Melania. And it's Madeline. <laughs> Yeah, it rhymes with gin and not wine. Okay, it, okay, got it. You really are from Massachusetts. So. Okay, so so Madeline, it's Natasha, Moshe, and our good friend Sabrina Jaliz, and uh, we want to help you. Um. Okay, so my thing is that I am in love with my best friend, uh. and um. So this is a problem because I mean it's a problem because I'm in love with my best friend, but like moving that aside. It's a problem because I can't like get any of the normal signals because for years now we've had a running joke about how we're going to get married and we're in love. Mm -hmm. And so like, I will like find pretty houses on Zillow and send them to her and she'll be like, oh, we're going to live there with like our collies and our six kids. And like, we've had whole discussions about which last name we would give our children because like we're both girls with long names. So it's not like quite as much of a given. Um, and like a year and a half ago, our school had like a fake prom. We're in college, but our school did like this like faux prom and like everybody was doing prom proposals and stuff. And she had a girlfriend at the time, but decided to like fake prom pose to me. And like I moved. And so in the fall, the day that Donald Trump uh, lost the election, I was with her allegedly. in the college. <laughs> <laughs> yes, allegedly. Um, I was in our college town visiting her outside, like wearing masks, all that. And she was like, oh, you should move back here because we've been doing school online because of COVID um, and be my girlfriend. And I was like, ha ha. And then we just like very abruptly move up, moved on. And then I moved back here on yeah. Sunday. Hold on. S- Sabrina wants I'm- to interrupt you. I will, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I feel like that was my ding, ding, ding. I've been waiting for the moment <laughs> where I'm like, give this a go. And that no, I totally agree. You're saying you, you don't get the normal signals. It's like that was the signal. There was a signal and it was very blunt. That would be so psycho to say to someone that you didn't want to fuck. 
<laughs> Iconic when you say that someone, especially when I'm, so, I'm sure she knows you are some, like, I'm sure a little bit like, <laughs> like you're giving the signal. So, I mean, I'm not saying, I'm sure it's complicated, but that's like very, very good news. How long ago was that? That was in November. So that was the day Trump won the, or sorry, I didn't win, lost the election. Ha ha, I win. <laughs> <laughs> And the other big thing recently, because like, you know, we make these jokes and they ebb and flow was that I moved back to our college town on Valentine's Day. So last Sunday, and she's like, I've never been single for Valentine's Day because she's always got like a string of really hot girlfriends. And I, you know, and so she goes, I don't have a Valentine. You have to be my Valentine. And so she took me on like a fake Valentine's Day date. And she said she was going to get me a Valentine. Oh, you're laughing at me. No, do you guys, no I'm not laughing. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Do you want to? Do you guys ever talk about your relationship or your feelings? In a, in a real way. I mean, like occasionally, like, like our, our relationship with each other. Well, I mean, yeah. I, what I'm, what I'm getting, and I think it's what Natasha may be referencing is it sounds like you guys have been having this like nervous like faux romantic energy with one another. Sabrina, what's you what are you doing? Are you going to are you taking us somewhere else? I'm grabbing a corona to celebrate the <laughs> new sex you're about to have with your best friend. <laughs> no, it sounds like you guys have like a you guys have like you're, a, you're basically calling to timestamp the moment where you day before have sex with your best friend. <laughs> No, we did you, just spend the entire afternoon hanging out in the meadow together I and mean, then driving around singing Taylor Swift songs. Have you kissed? No, we have never kissed. I mean, we I she's definitely seen me naked, but all of my friends have. Um Sure, even I have. In the meadow is where you're supposed to kiss her, but tomorrow put this podcast for her and then having full whatever lingerie means to you. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh you guys have been doing this thing where you have this like faux romance. Oh. But you don't have Sabrina said said it right. Like you don't play that game with someone that you don't have any f- romantic charge with. So you've been dancing around this like weird faux romance, but then it's been defaulting back to like this close friendship for years. So it's just like some one of you needs to make the move and saying like, "Hey, okay, listen, it this actually is real for me." And and then once you do, the other person clearly is going to be like. I mean, listen, there's no guarantees. There's a possibility she'll be like, for me, this decades-long flirtation was actually just a full-on uh, illusion. But probably one of you is going to, the other one will go, yeah, me too. But right, but flirting might be part of her personality. And if she well, always has a hot string of girls waiting around the corner. You know, I know you're lusting after her, but it's like, is she the right, I don't know. Like, I, I think it's about sex right now. It's about having a fun first time having sex if you don't have a fun first time having sex that then you don't want to be doing this you know it's like if you guys connect sexually that's an interesting point that's going to take it to the next level so I or change it right or like it's either 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 you guys connect sexually and, and then that's like that means like that's the foundation of building this right like that's the only thing that we give each other that our friends can't give each other so when you guys head towards that and that starts sexually means like, you know, what it feels like to kiss each other and all that. Like, I do think it seems like you, you are like pretty into her. And I feel like your mantra right now should be like, I could get you off so nicely and well, and like, don't get, and like start getting yourself in that mindset, but like be cocky about it too. And do all those things you've got to do. I love know. it. <laughs> Why not? Wait, that is. The, it goes back to what it goes back to what Natasha and I would do in the 1300s. Absolutely. You know? <laughs> yeah, Moshe, we know we're we're experts on this. I guess it's just funny to me because this this is a funny conversation because I'm just trying to imagine giving the same advice to a young man who's saying the same thing. I'm in love with my best friend and I want to make it official. And I go like, "You just got to know you're gonna fuck her so good, dog. You're gonna fucking blast her, bro. It, like she's gonna true. fucking." What? Yeah, no, I hear. No, I, I hear you. <laughs> is it true? Is it not true or yes, true? No, I hear what you're. Yeah, no, I hear what you're saying. I, I hear it. Yeah, I think. Like, would you guys be married? Like, you guys are both. Like, if you didn't have good sex when you met, like, it's like it. That's the foundation. It's like, and and everybody. I think everybody knows this, right? I, I don't think this is a universal truth in the way you do, Sabrina, that, that, that the foundation of romance is sexual chemistry. I think No, like, but when you're best friends, because they've already they've already they have, chemi- they have they can uh, see 
you know, have right. like this long rapport and relationship. That's fair. Of course, I'm not saying sex is what you like live and die on, but I'm saying it is the je ne sais quoi extra spice. It's the juice you'll add to the gin, Madeline. Right? It's like, <laughs> I hear that. I hear that. That's a, that's an interesting point. Uh, what, I didn't like, know what, you were a rapper, but I'm a <laughs> Wait, when Sabrina says to you, like, m- make a sexual shift in your relationship, what do you think? Do you think, like, oh, my God, I could never? Or are you, like, yes, exciting, yes? I have never made the first move or been the person to put the moves on another person ever. Um, I, the most I can say is that one time I set up a situation where I put the other girl in a position where she was going to do that towards me. Um, but I would never myself, I don't know, kiss someone or hold, or I, hold their hand. I don't know what I'm saying. I would never like be that forward with someone. Cause I'm like very repressed in all sorts of ways because I am from Massachusetts. Right. Fair. I got to ask you, is this a femme versus femme? No, um, I'm femme and she's butch. <laughs> um, and she's very much a top and I am very much a bottom and we both know these and things. All you young people that are going to get mad and write in, you just live your whole lives and write me when you're 35. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, oh, right. So you're the- I'll Watch you're... the holiday movie and write me back. So you're the- <laughs> she's the butch you're the femme you're the bottom she's the top so the idea of you going like hey get over here because i'm about uh, to rock your world is a little bit out of the vibe of your relationship in other words kind of yeah are you willing to to lose what it would you know the embarrassment of just saying if you feel like she's just not coming on to you of just saying like just so you know like i would be open to something physical yeah, the next and just just say it, and you have to just work through what the worst case scenario is, which would be her saying, "I'm sorry, I just don't think of you in that way." Which, if that's true, that'd be really great to know. But you mm-hmm. have to, but that would be really humili. I would be humil- humiliated to to do that. So I'm also just seeing visions right now. I'm seeing visions, <laughs> and I'm like, is this person in like a Playboy phase, and you are the person in their life that's consistent, but then it's like hot girl here, hot girl there, and that's a bit of part of their identity. Yeah, I mean, so she is super flirty, and like, so, and I always make fun of her because she, this is the first time she's been single for like more than a few months since she was in high school. Um, and she is a year older than me, so she's a year out of college. She's like basically consistently had either like hookups or girlfriends the entire time, and like without gaps in the middle because she tends to be open in her relationships. And all of those girls are short and skinny with long, straight brown hair and bright blue eyes. And I am, I have blue eyes, but that's about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so she like, yeah, so. so her type is, is, is skewing like. Yes. Not, yeah. Okay. And like, she always like says that like, she likes me because she like the thing that like breaks up her relationships is usually, oh, the girl doesn't want to go on, on adventures with me or I can't talk to her. And she always says the two things about me is that we can talk for hours and that um, we do go on adventures together, which like I said this when I wrote into the show, but I feel like the best friend in every Taylor Swift song. Uh-huh. Like, <laughs> I mean, that reference means nothing to me <laughs> because I don't listen to that, but I kind of understand what you're saying. You feel a, a little bit like uh, you're watching her have this exciting experience while you're pining for, for her kind of a thing. And Here, yeah. here's the thing, too. You guys might hook up, but she is definitely doesn't seem like, you know, it's just going to be you guys forever. Well, but this you is, know? A, and this I think is that's something to question. consider. Well, because she you don't know that. I mean, I do get the vibe now as you describe these, like the type, the type that she goes after, the fact that she's not been single. You know, it's generally like if the rock is skipping, 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 you can like predict the pattern. But I mean, I think the reason I like have hope now and I didn't have hope. So technically, this is the first time we've been single at the same time. But last summer, we both ended long term relationships at the same time. And I really didn't have any hope then because I knew she was like immediately going and like hitting on other girls, matching with people on Tinder, whatever. Whereas this she's been single for like several months now, which I guess like isn't long, like for like you guys, because you're all like real adults. But like for us, like I, I, that is like kind of a long time. Sure. And I think the vibe has changed. Like, I don't think and part of this is COVID, but like, I just don't see her doing that anymore. Well, so that is part of my, like, I think I'm the girl next door in the rom-com. And this is when I get to be like the main character. Rom-com is exactly the right word. The words I've been thinking this whole time. Like, yes, there is the, the Sabrina and Natasha are correct that like the, the simple version is 
that things just continue. This person is who you know that they are and that, you know, this isn't somebody that is for you. But the rom-com version of it is that you're the person that they could become serious with and could settle down and 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 will love and and is ready to move on from these these surface experiences but and get and get involved in a marriage you exactly (laughs) that is a whole thing that i have a pinterest wedding board that i've been working on since like before i could have legally gotten married um and she like always brings up like the she always like has what I imagine like my wife the suits like the suit that my wife would wear on the wedding day. She always goes, "Oh, I look so hot in your in the suit that you picked out for your butch wife." Like so fucked up the things that she would is saying to you if she doesn't want to at least totally. fuck and try. To so so Sabrina, how can Madeline let this girl know that she's ready to fuck? Okay, well, do you think? Either you or the girl has seen my 15 minutes on Netflix. <laughs> okay. Okay. So this is how you start. You go to, you go, you're watching Netflix. Then you go to the comedy lineup. On um, the sixth episode, it's mine. It's 15 minutes. Okay. It's funny. And I'm get and I recorded it six days after my son was born. So I've got this like energy that's just like maniacal happy. And and you watch that and then you say to them, you're like, do you think you would ever want to have like a <laughs> Wait, Sabrina, then- your pitch is that the first time she brings up even romantically being engaged with her, she's like, should we have children? Oh, no, you're, you're a cishet. Hey, I stand correct. I'm sorry. Wait, wait, hold on. How come motion I see? This is why cishet is a slur. How <laughs> Natasha. Come- why do I have to be the same you thing as a best man? Friends about to fuck. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Wait, she made a good point. She I made said a good this point. is why cishet feels like a slur because I have to be the same as like this man. I want well, to no, because my- then you'd be saying cishet woman. Like it's right. like right. Oh. right. But we're in a category. But she's saying she wants to be separated. Like a true. I want to be separated from men. Like a true white woman, she wants to be slightly <laughs> separated from a white man. Just like I don't want the full the full weight of all of the badness. Um, okay, so you were saying, how can she let her know? Okay, so she says... Okay, so you watch the special and then kind of like hold hands during it and then after be like, let's fucking kiss. Like, let's fucking kiss. What does your special have to do with their love journey? Because they talk about having a family. Oh, I hear you, I hear you. You know, no, as but a- the, the Netflix is just to start getting... It's been said that it gets people horny. Well, look. I don't want to be the one to be the one saying that, but I've read it, so why would I not put it out there? Madeline also- that has not been my experience of trying to watch Netflix on dates. Madeline- one time I like was watching that 70s show and I got so into the plot line that as the other girl was kissing me, I just kept turning to the TV. Well, you weren't into that girl, but how do you get this girl into you? And the answer is just by being yourself and then saying, let's kiss. Okay, sure. Natasha. <laughs> I was going to say, as a fellow femme, you guys wouldn't understand, but Madeline and I, you know, we're both kind of on the femme scale. So uh, we we want to be wooed a little bit. And so, you know, if you want someone to woo you, you have to really let them know that you'll accept their uh, their, you know, so you have to kind of like laugh at everything. Don't be afraid of physical touch. Try to offer yourself. Be like very physically there so it's like if you're doing all of this then and and she doesn't do anything then what can you do i disagree except say what i said which is you know i would i wouldn't turn you down that i agree with i this is i I agree with that part because to me at a certain point a best friend situation like i don't think you should take what sabrina said i think you should take this go to netflix and try look up the uh the honeymoon stand up special okay now this is a more he- cishet normative type of stand up special but it i remember true. that your mom made you watch uh, read lesbian erotica okay though, right? so there are some queer elements to it exactly <laughs> no no this is what i think i think that at, after so many years of being best friends with both of you staring at each other neither of you blinking somebody's got to blink at a certain point somebody's got to become vulnerable and blink and say and just what natasha said I would if you. So you want to be wooed. You want her to be the top. You want her to be the butch. She doesn't have to say it. You can just have that. Like one of the things in your head is what Sabrina said. I can fuck you so good. And the other thing is like that physical, like I will, you know, I will 
do it. I will remember you. <laughs> I think somebody's got to say it. I, I think so. I think you have to say it. And here's the risk. Uh, I've been thinking about this as you've been talking. Here's the risk. It's The risk is not being rejected. The risk is losing the dynamic with your best friend. And that is a heavy risk. Mm-hmm. You know, the, that you could say this. The dynamic this. should be shifted anyway if you it, feel kind of in love with them. Exactly. Like, you know, it's like, then at least they know. Then, like, it's going to be placed in a way where... Exactly. Yeah. I agree with Sabrina completely. Like, that's what I was thinking. It's like, yes, you at risk losing your best friend, but the truth is you lost your best, fr- your platonic best friend when you fell in love with her. So you're kind of past that anyway. Now you're just like playing doggy paddle with your own emotions and it's time to take the plunge. And I want you to please send a video of you guys making out to the podcast <laughs> and CC me. <laughs> To make it out to to the special with the special playing in the background, with Sabrina's special playing in the of background. Course. Okay, Madeline, do you have a little more guidance? What are you gonna do? Um, I do feel like I have more guidance. I might just send this to her, provided I look cute in the edit. Easy. Um, easy. <laughs> um, no, I I do think that we're supposed to hang out on the weekend and go walking in another meadow. So that always works as timing. And also send her this video because if she's butch enough, maybe she's a contractor and can um, fix whatever that bizarre corner you have right behind you. That's the most MC Escher looking room I've ever seen in my life. Meadows, meadows are very underrated. I think you're going to have an amazing time. Yeah. What better? Make sure to bring something to lay down. Make sure to have like either a big jacket or a little blanket. So you guys can like, you know, I would bottom for I do, you. Like, I, I do think that it was a really interesting like move when Natasha was like, we're both femmes and this is the way you flirt as a femme because I totally did just offer you my specific. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, oh no, yeah, no, there's that. There is that. So uh, I just want to give a shout out to like having a perspective shift. Beautiful. <laughs> Intersectionality. Yeah. Oh yeah, this, yeah. we've, we've, reached peak intersectionality on this podcast i love it all right well thanks madeline thank you madeline. absolutely Good thank luck. you guys Wait, will you keep in yeah, touch yeah, and tell us it. what happens we want to know uh, yes i will okay thank you good luck i when you say tell us what happens we want to know and you don't find out then you know it's bad <laughs> when we never hear from her again it's like, <laughs> do you well? find out i'm sure everyone you say tell us what happens right no, not always. Sometimes we get some updates, but but often people romp off to their happy lives. We don't often want to know what happens. <laughs> there are certain calls that feel like a dangling. What's like, the worst thing that can happen? That is that she's just gonna like that that her best friend's gonna get another girlfriend soon. No, that her best friend and her once she once she reveals the reality that both of them already know, which is that she has romantic feelings, her best friend gets weird about it, and that their relationship dissolves in its current form but sabrina you were right it's already dissolving it's just one they're both pretending it hasn't now it's just like what direction does it dissolve in i'm always right Mosh. i know <laughs> believe me i know i've seen you in action well sabrina that was really great that, that, call, that call took a little longer than normal so you know do we not take any more calls yeah do you want to do one more yeah do we have okay. two i we didn't know two, right? i was just i didn't want you to like have to no, okay. I'm obsessed. Oh, like if shit. You, I want to get a glass of wine. Hold on. You what? I could do this forever. Just like bringing in people with problems and then pretending like we're authorized to tell them <laughs> what to do. Uh, yeah, it's literally a living. Well, that's because they're so... They're, but our particular audience is very young. So like, you know, we've just lived a few more years. And also we're here I'm primarily to make funny. Gosh, we get it. Your demo is super young. No, I just mean like sometimes. Well, now that we can see them, that's what I'm realizing. I didn't really know that until we started doing video. And I was like, these people look like they're 12. Well, n- stop. <laughs> like Madeline would have called and you'd be like, well, that woman in her late 40s just graduated college and is in a dizzy tizzy. Okay, we have one more person. Okay. Ooh, fellow Canadian. You're going to like this. You're going to love this. Yes. We're going to call Lena in Toronto. Toronto. Yes. That's where I grew up, baby. Watch. She's she's a septuagenarian. Oh, yeah. She's like 90. <laughs> How do I find love after my hubby died? <laughs> <laughs> well, typically younger people need more advice. I hear. Yeah. Hi. Not a septuagenarian. Hello, <laughs> Lena or Lena? <laughs> Like Lena Horn. Okay, we've been having a lot of problems with uh, names tonight, so just so you know. 
You know what? I get it all the time. I go, but yeah, Lena like Lena Horn. Lena like Lena how, Horn. How are you guys doing? Lena, it's me, Natasha, your favorite comedian, Moshe Kasher, and then our friend Sabrina Jalees. Who is from none I'm other than I born and raised. You're gonna judge me hard, but I'm from Oshawa. <laughs> I'm not gonna judge you. I'm happy to speak to just anybody that has health care. <laughs> <laughs> do you like drake or do you are you mad that drake is representing so hard you know what i i love drake i like the little um i like the heart thing that he's doing right now in his hair i think yes. it's really progressive Take i it. think it's gonna be a trend that sticks around for a long time All right. yeah. and we're and we're brothers honey are you guys done with whatever this regional <laughs> reference of whoever this drake fellow is can oh, we get we're into not done. we're not done wait can i get like a quick opinion on on the weekend weekend's good i mean i don't really know i thought it was well, i was so scared that he changed his face permanently so i'm just relieved that he didn't and that's my main i'm pretty sure yeah. i'm two thumbs down on the wait, weekend wait is did the weekend <laughs> is the weekend from toronto too He's yeah from Montreal, I, isn't he? no it's from toronto i did oh. not know. how are you guys taking over hip-hop i love this me and Lena, baby. Okay, you that's what it is. Mess with us, you'll come around us and you'll get fast. Wait, we'll fuss you up if you mess with us. Rap. Can I ask you? <laughs> can I ask you though about a real, an actual Canadian hip hop, actually skilled Canadian hip hop figure, which is uh, Snow, uh, MC Snow, uh, uh, in former fame. Like, what are your feelings on oh. Snow? Don't worry, I did live television with him and we were wearing the same shoe. No, no way, really? <laughs> I looked him up recently for some reason and he's actually, I think, doing good stuff in the community these days. Wait, Lena, are you a cishet? Am I a cis head? <laughs> yeah, cishet. Het with a T? <laughs> Forget it. All right, it's a problem <laughs> Natasha has right now. How can we help you, Lena? So, so uh, I don't know if this, okay, so... I am seeing this guy right now. Cis and hat. uh pardon me. Cishet, cishet, I just cishet. Okay, so I'm a cis hat. Cis yes, hat, yeah, yeah. Okay, so so I'm a cis hat and I'm seeing this guy right now. <laughs> you are the coolest guest I think we've ever had, Lena. <laughs> and uh um but I, I, I think he's gay. <laughs> not, a so cis hat. <laughs> not a cis hat. Not a cis hat. No, he might not be a cis hat. Okay. I'm bringing all these norms. Tell okay. us why. And <sighs> okay, the first reason is really dumb. But the first time he took off his jacket, I was like, those are like gay shoulders. Do you know what I mean? No. Like, no. I don't know Lena. The thing. No, Lena. Lena, I have to say something. I think you're a little gay. I think we're all a little gay. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So the shoulders part is just like, that's just, you don't. Okay, that's that's, that's dumb. That's dumb. That's dumb. Okay. No, that's yeah, you mean gay like the retro when you used to be like those are gay shoulders. Like bad, <laughs> they're bad shoulders. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't mean bad. Okay, I know. All right, we know what you meant, but like, or I, don't I know quite know. Like what you gay meant. people he, are so built. It's like, like she thought he was too, but like he spent so much time at the gym. Oh, they were like too built. We'll go with that. We'll go with that. That's not where I was going with it, but we'll go with that. They're okay. All right. Lena. Okay. Well, so, tell us the tell us a real reason, not just some okay, weird judgmental re reason. Okay, a real reason. And I don't know if this, because I was asking some of my friends, so I don't know if, uh, I think it might be just like a white dude thing, but he was talking I'll about how, you. okay, tell me, yeah, yeah. tell me, it, he, he, he mentioned one time that he, he loved dick. <laughs> <laughs> is that a white guy thing or is that all white guys just love dick? Or no, like... <laughs> no, but he, he, you know, when he was in high school would, would jerk off, like watch porn and jerk off with his, with his friends. Okay. Okay. A white and guy so, thing? Oh, wait, I've heard guys tell me that. Yeah. I don't know if that's... I've done it. You, Moshe told me that. I've done it. <laughs> you have done it? Yeah, I've done it. But yeah. Moshe also... Okay. I mean, it was gay. It was pretty gay, too. It was it was me, another straight guy, a gay man, and we were watching his gay porn. So that was a somewhat gay that's situation. Kind of I like that. But it... Um, but, and, and that's not cis hat. That is not so cis hat. <laughs> <laughs> Sabrina's making notes. Hold on. You're about to get whiteboarded. <laughs> We've got um, one not cis hat. <laughs> Okay, so he jerked well, okay, off with so, his friend. So there's that. Maybe that's just like a dude thing. That's a high school um, thing. A high school thing. He also calls me like bitch a lot, but like not like you're a bitch. Like he calls me like bitch. You know what I mean? I know. He's gay. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> Sabrina's <it>. heard enough. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. And and like the first time you did come over, you know, we're like, what do you want to watch? And okay, he's like, I, I just feel oh. like every time you impersonate him, I'm like scared <laughs> you're gonna miss him. Like, are you guys dating? <laughs> I, uh, so, and, and he, he, he wanted to watch RuPaul and like, I love RuPaul. I just didn't expect that to come from him. So it, it's all these little things. Okay, you know, hold, here's, the, here's the only question that matters. Do you guys have sex and do you have good sex oh, and do you have hot sex? Oh, a lot. And it's great. And it's great. Oh, what are you great. So I'm kind of like, let's keep this going. But I also, I'm like, I don't know if you, I, I feel like you're very mediocre about me because I have a vagina. And uh-huh. so my thing is like, I'm, I'm leaving the country and like, a few months, like I'm moving to China. And so I'm wondering if <laughs> Lino, like, who are you? <laughs> Why okay. are you moving to China? Like you should have immediately just started by saying I'm moving to China. So I'm si- I'm cis hat and I am moving to China. <laughs> I'm a cis, I'm a cis hat I am and I'm moving to China. Man. <laughs> Bitch, you're moving to China. <laughs> so I'm yeah, so I got a I got a job in China that I actually dropped one job. I got I got a, a hired and they said I had to change my hair. So I was like, fuck that job. Uh-huh. But I took this other job and why? Because your so hair I, was too gay or no, I'm just joking. Okay, that's, go ahead. That's, go ahead. Exa- that's actually straight up what they said to me to my face. Okay. Not okay. Okay. But both are in China. This one is yeah, this one is in is in and China. Can you tell so, us anything about the job specifically? <laughs> I it's top secret. No, I'm kidding. I'm like teaching kids. Oh, cool. Oh, All okay, right. cool. Yeah, I would let my kid hang around you. <laughs> thank you so much. I mean, that's what I get paid for. So thank you. You are kind of cool and oh, wait, very mysterious. Was it, what, were it parent? Was it parents like an, a teaching or nanny job that told you you had to change your hair? It was. It was. This one actually was. Um, I said China early. It was Korea, and they said that uh, they're very conservative, so I'd have to change my hair. Interesting. Like just racist. Like just racist. <laughs> racism is cool. Yeah. Okay. Got it. <laughs> we're very conservative in that we don't like other races. So. <laughs> Am I wearing white foundation? And I'm like, I'm not cool with that. So, so I'm kind of wondering, like, do I just keep, you know, keep of hanging course. around with this guy of who course. definitely like he's not definitely gay. He fucks you. He's at least something other than gay. And who it's knows? good sex when he's fucking you. It's all right. Like it's you know. You know, you first said that yes. it was banging. Yeah, yeah. Sabrina. It was on banging, to you. as in like it, it's. We're in a pandemic. Like I'm not. She's like you it's know. banging, as in I, I'm desperate. Can I tell you what my real feeling is? You don't really yeah. care about this person that much. No, no. You don't really like his shoulders or <laughs> the way he's like, bitch. You want to have sex in the city? <laughs> <laughs> and she, and you, you're about to go <laughs> to China to teach English, so you're like, I'm. I hate that I keep fucking this guy. I'm gonna call this podcast and just like vent about it. And that's the real issue because I think that people truly like. There's a world in which uh, I can't even say it. I, I think that I could probably end up with a man like that was fam enough. Maybe like maybe the like you know, their balance would be found. Like, it doesn't really matter that I would, and then he could call a podcast and be like, I think my wife's a dyke and he'd be right. But if I'm fucking him and we're having great sex. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm like wondering if I should cancel this dude, not cancel, but like. Well, yeah, know. find something he's done wrong and make sure that you destroy his life. <laughs> it is really Yeah, good. cancel yeah. him, get him. So, so I'm wondering like, like, do I, do I just go and try to find another Tinder thing for the next like few months? But it's we're in a pandemic, so I don't want to just be swinging my door. You open. should stay with him because he's amusing and he fucks you until the pandemic's over, and then you I don't move think to China. You should stay with him. I don't think you like him that much. No, just until she moves to like China. Him that much, you're like, finally, someone let me. You like, saw that? I don't think that. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I don't think that you. It's like, don't you have great friends that you want to see before you move to China? Like, That's true. You know, just spend time. Yeah, but I don't like, fuck my friends. Oh, but like, fuck it. Can't you? Oh uh, yeah, I mean, then then I I guess just like make it clear that you're not boyfriend girlfriend. You just fuck each other. He's like, oh, you are yeah. girlfriend. <laughs> He's girlfriend. Like, girlfriend. Girlfriend, you are you're gonna stay my girlfriend. <laughs> now, when you say your sex was, if banging, I was a gay dude, I would fuck you though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I was a gay dude, I'd fuck me too. So thank you. When you said the sex was banging, did you mean that it was because there was like banging deep house playing in the background <laughs> that he has to have on to have sex with you? Oh my god, he does listen to a lot of that too. He's introducing it to me. I can't tell yeah. if you're for real, Lena, but I do like I like that you exist. Wait, so what's our advice to her? 
I just think this isn't a very serious situation. Like, you're. What do you mean he's gay? Of course he's not gay. He the puts stakes it... are low, so have sex. Exactly. Or no. Yeah, you're moving to China. I've, I've dated a guy who I thought was gay, and he did not fuck me, ever. And it was always an issue. And it's like, why isn't he having sex with me? And why doesn't he want to fuck? And you know, it's like, I'm sure those things were related. So it's so brave that you're able to talk about your relationship with Tom Cruise, despite and I am with you. <laughs> I I just think Lena that you are leaving, so nothing matters. You should do whatever you want, whatever makes you feel good. My only, use him. Yeah, my only bit of advice to you would be maybe just change the hair up slightly. Just like I don't know, you know what I mean, like a, a blonde wig, you know, some sort of it. I like. It coming from you, Mosa. yes, for sure. I appreciate it coming from you, white man. Thank you. What well, if, no what wait, as Ray a white and- man, as a white man, I would just say get a blonde wig, find a friend, a male friend, <laughs> jerk off to gay porn with them. You know, just as yes. a white man, this is my advice. But thank. God they okay. told you that about the hair that you didn't go there because I that know. is just like kind of foreboding. That was shitty, right? Like if I went, I will, I will, like actually, I that is so <laughs> true, Natasha. Like if to they were live in a world where like you know that's what people think. But and, if they were four, I mean, not that we don't live in that, but they if they were four percent less comfortable with being outwardly racist and had been like, okay, you can come, but then you realize they were the same people that were <laughs> asking you to change your hair, but I they had kept wish it I from went you and just like infiltrated. Oh god, <laughs> they never <laughs> change your hair. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's so fun you're going to china that's what i'm more interested in that, that i sounds mean cool. the good news is you're captivating you're cute you seem like a lot of fun kids love you everyone across the world wants to hire you you have the world to look towards so instead of worrying about this guy and his sexuality and whether or not he like really has the hots for you or whether or not he's gay like think about what you want in someone yeah and I like that. make a you know make a mental you know, note of it or write it down and, and just know that like you're about to start a brand new chapter Amen. and it's exciting. Hey man, do you have any whiteboard wisdom to leave Lena with Sabrina? Hold on. She's got one final message for you, Lena, before okay. we let you go and say good luck in China. Hold on. Here we go. Um, <laughs> Oh, uh, episode, six? episode six of Netflix, Netflix. the comedy lineup. Comedy lineup. I'm quite certain it's episode six, but 15 minutes of wisdom you can't live without. You honestly, have, you have to check out Sabrina's uh, special on Netflix. No, honestly, all you have to do is get this guy, flip on episode six of the comedy lineup on Netflix, turn to him at the end and say, do you really relate to this f- situation? And you'll find all the answers you need. Okay, I'll do that. Okay, good luck, Lena. Bye. Thanks, thanks, good everybody. luck in Bye, China. Bye, Toronto best friend. Bye. Bye. Mysterious art, I just want to say. The what? The arc? The art. <laughs> the art behind her was mysterious. I was yes, like, are you in a, a, like a corporate hotel? <laughs> I didn't see it. I, I, I just... Li- I, I was kind of captivated it didn't by her. Fit I was her. captivated by her. I liked her. And then she said the gay shoulders thing. I was like, oh, wait, are you bad? And then I was like, ah, I think I like you she's again. She's definitely not bad. She's just, yeah. I think she's, uh, Natasha's answer was perfect because it like cut to like the deeper thing, which is don't worry about whether he's attracted to you or not. As, as a woman, I feel like a lot cis-hat. of women. Cis-hat. As a cishet. F- well, no, cis-hat as a cishet woman. Cis-hat woman. As a cishet woman. You know, just let me talk. As a woman. Okay. No, I just mean like, I don't, I want to say a real statement. I do feel that. There's so much like pressure to please. Mm. And I think that a lot of our energy, at least mine and a lot of people I know, let us talk about myself, is is ta- is taken up by like wanting to please people and approval. And, you know, I think we like women can can do so much. So it's like so much of our energy gets dissipated into like the ether and like making sure everything's okay. And it's just really gets to be really hard. Whereas like, I think it's easier for men to just think about what they want or it takes more, more uh, training for women to know how to do that. And also like when you say that a lot of like probably gay men or femme men can, can like relate to it more so than like butch women, you know, it's like, this isn't, it's been an interesting sort of uh, tonight's, theme has been the femmes cut to the core <laughs> for sure that's true but I did think also i will say like when she said that she was dating a man off of the gay the woman who was femme and gay i was like we got a gay night we got toronto gays calling in toronto gays and then she was like boy and i was like okay i almost feel like you know they could potentially be that matchup where it's like she is maybe just presents oh, more his. confident energy. Like, look at her. She's moving to China because she's like, right. out of here. Like, bold. 
getting what she wants, talking about her relationship in a way that's like, you know, not precious. Totally true. And isn't that, yeah. Well, it's kind of cool to be able to fill each other out too, you know, in whatever way you do in a relationship. Mm-hmm. Right. So maybe that is gender fluidity. Well, I mean, yeah. I think isn't the, the, the ultimate, not goal, but the ultimate evolution of society is like nothing matters but being true to yourself. Like none of, identity matters only when identities are oppressed. That's the reason people say I am this, I am that is because there's a dominant there's a dominant force that's saying being other than us is bad. And so in, in 10,000 years, there'll be, there'll be less use for identity be, in theory because we will have evolved to this point where it's like whatever you are is perfect. Same with our, chi- our, ch- our children. That's very optimistic. I think we're dying in about a year. I think you might be right. I'm not saying we're going to make it. No, Sabrina, I don't say we're going to make it. I'm just saying if we make it and and we and if we evolve, there's a future, you, you know, the the future you would look to is not one where it's like is one where everyone is just totally free to be what they are without any expectation. And that is what we're talking about with our kids. Yeah. Like hopefully that's the thing you're leading them towards is like, it doesn't matter what you are or aren't. It matters what's true for you. Yeah. That you don't look at someone, whether it's like their race or gender or weight or whatever, and have expectations about who they should or, or how they should act, who they should be. Right. Yeah. Amen. Amen to that. Well, I felt like I learned a lot. Me too. This has been good. I'm not letting this go. We're going for a couple more. Let's do six. (laughs) (laughs) We'll we'll Uh, do a marathon. You are so funny. You're the best. And uh, hopefully I'll see you in the flesh once again in our lives. It'll happen. In our lifetimes. Imagine you never did. (laughs) Well, Moshe's like, you always want to talk about COVID. But I am like kind of horrified that this is the state of the world right now. Well, Natasha is endlessly fascinated with COVID and its variants. <laughs> and she wants to talk to me about variants, I would say, seven times a week. Okay, and I'm like, terrible. I just don't care. Most of us talk about variants. So talk about variants. Um, <laughs> hey, bitch, I want to hey, talk bitch, variants. <laughs> um, yeah, anyway, yeah, we'll get through it. I just my thing with variants is like no matter what variant occurs in COVID nineteen, it doesn't affect. It's not going to affect me. I yes, just, it will. What if vaccines and testing are, are rendered obsolete because then, variants become so strong? Then I will deal with that. But knowing that variants are are a come and won't it won't help me or hurt me. It'll just it does hurt you out. now though because then it makes you even once everyone's vaccinated, we still have to be social distanced with masks. What hurts me is ruminating on the possibility of catastrophe that has not occurred. I think I would lean into the balance that Moshe's providing here where it's like, take that highway exit off of the train of like, <laughs> we got to think about this to the maximum because the, var- <laughs> the variant that I need is a variation on what we've been existing in. So if I could just Amen. see she's so wise to the vaccine moment here and hold on to the hope that it presents without needing to be fed like but it could still come back and it'll pull us right back it's like i, think I this know moment to feel good and if it goes right back then guess what we made all the breads and gained all the weight we'll do it again <laughs> <laughs> we'll get right i'll send some banana bread your yeah, way honey we'll all right <laughs> After we get B117 or yeah. whatever it's called or whatever. What is that? I don't know. Whatever the variants Oh, are. no more variants. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to do those. Throwing off different variant things. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I'm saying it wrong. Um, this Let's do a variant on this podcast in that let's wrap it up. We got to go. Sabrina, <laughs> you've been the best. <laughs> Most of the trying to be slow. We never really wrap things up. <laughs> I told them you only had an hour because I didn't want to. Because right. you, you only want oh, to it's do ten, an hour. It's ten, no, I feel bad because I'm always like, it's an hour. I mean, I so like I hanging out with you guys. I just I feel like after Same. we record, let's keep chatting for a bit. All right. Can you take out when I said B117? <laughs> Why? That was funny. Oh, really? I don't know what it's called, though. Why are you upset that you don't know the name of the variant? <laughs> You're right. <laughs> I don't Definitely know. Definitely the wrong thing. <laughs> Honestly, I need to take 
the news off of the side of my phone. Yeah. Do you guys have that when you like pick up your phone and then look and see what horrors happen? Do you do no, that? No, Shauna's got the worst. I don't know who she's getting the news feeds from, but she's only getting like 9,000 rapes in this small <laughs> village. And I'm like, why? Really think I'm like, why? It's happening all the time. I promise, babe. Like, this stuff. No, that's what's crazy. The phone now, you just open it up and you just like pour poison into your brain. Someone like, like described the it moment as main, you wake up. mainlining yeah. the bad news into your arm. But like, I really can't help it. What do you do? You don't get it on the side of your phone. Do I'm you? not affected by it in the same way that you are. Oh, it doesn't. He'll, he'll watch like a documentary about like a child getting like stolen or. I just or have something. a day. I have a I deep. Can't. I have a deep uh, receptacle for darkness and it won't affect my walking life. <laughs> Like I just get, I get over it. I turn the documentary off. How do off. you sleep? How do I sleep? I sleep great. Okay, that's good. That's the that's the test, I think. Yeah. No, it's just I don't dark stuff, bad news. I'm very, I'm not optimistic. I don't think everything's going to be okay. I just don't. It doesn't seep into my every waking moment in the same way it does to some people. It doesn't seep into my every waking moment. It just like horrifies me and makes me think of a new fresh way that, that like, a is, disaster could happen that's seeping into your every waking moment that's what that is mm. okay well i like your advice to stop doing that hey i'm gonna try to stop doing it for the rest of the week let's see what happens let's put a variant on it okay All well right. just lean into also the possibility that it could we could be on the precipice of people being vaccine natoid uh, which i don't know how you say that <laughs> No, you're right. It's like you have an option. You have an option to look on the bright side right now. And taking the option that doesn't include looking on the bright side is a choice and it doesn't need to be made. Yeah. I mean, I get it because I was raised like to be like troubleshooting constantly what could go wrong. But I feel like it's a nice balance that Shauna brings into my life. And I also pull her out of the darkness in different ways, too. But like I, you know, it's just nicer not to have to constantly be thinking of like the worst case scenario and how to play it out i hear you i just want to be prepared i i just need like time so how I, would if you i can start preparing for how would things... you prepare for a variant <laughs> tell me what you would do to prepare <laughs> what would you do to prepare for a COVID 19 variant first i'd get a real cool outfit giggle at every joke <laughs> my legs not the exact amount that i'd put this on and uh i would oh yeah uh, you look ready to I'd fight off <laughs> a fight off a covid19 variant i'd put on one of my ostrich furs and uh i'd go out on t on the to the town i don't know i think what would happen was is um uh, was like it's she's already lived it well i just want to know how to pr how to plan for my life and how to what plan does, my ch for my child but what can you do for a child to prevent variants from taking over i could like not put her in preschool i guess and just keep watching her all day i guess that's true you know that kind of thing i think there are options that are safer than full preschool if the variants are taking over okay that's good to know <laughs> that's good to know i mean nothing's good it's not good we're already in kind of hell I, I just I my whole take but you're right why not why don't we all collectively try to think positive yeah until until it's not positive then we will collectively try to figure it out and it doesn't have to be like the binary of like we're gonna think positive it's like things are shitty things are harder it's like walking up the fucking hill so much of life that used to be downhill but like I don't want to be like dwelling on the variants bringing us back into this. And then that's, this is like, this type of life is what we have for the next 20 years. It isn't going to happen. You guys, that's not, this isn't even possible. The way that viruses work, we will not be in this for 20 years. Only seven. No, we'll be good. I have a, I have a feeling we're getting out of it. Okay, great. We're going to get out of it. The vaccine. Not only gonna... do we give advice, we are also <laughs> almost scientists. <laughs> all right, we got to go. Sabrina, we love you. Okay, bye. Great uplifting you. end to this all. <laughs> well, Sabrina Jalice, find her episode of the comedy lineup, episode six, and it will do everything you needed to do psychologically and romantically in your life. S Sabrina Jalice. Bye, honey. Talk to you soon. All right. Tosh. Yes. I don't want you to worry because I don't think worry helps. And because I think that it's bad 
for you and I want you to be happy. Thank and you. the reason I want you to be happy is because I love you. Oh, thanks. I love you too. Thank you.